Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Jochem. Okay, so we've been hitting ester enolate chemistry pretty hard, whether it be with the clays and condensation, uh, looking at clays and condensations in reverse for retro clays and condensations, uh, Diekmann condensations. What I wanted to do was make one video where we kind of put it all together, and I want to just look at some kind of products of ester enolate chemistry and step them back. Basically, look at the product and say, I know what two things contributed to make this product because whether you're doing an ester enolate attacking an ester or you're doing a ketone or kind of aldehyde, ester, like a, take a ketone or an aldehyde to make an enolate to then attack an ester, ester enolate chemistry isn't going anywhere. It's very popular towards the middle and tail end of OCHEM 2. So I just wanted to have one video where if you wanted to just kind of see how things get stepped back, you can come to this video per se. Okay, so we're gonna do three problems. The first one, uh, I'm gonna toss up on the board right now. Okay, so given this molecule right here, I just wanna kind of do some retrosynthesis and I wanna step this back to what we can work with here. So I hope, so when we have a product like this, I hope this is screaming very straightforward clays and condensation. Because we see a 1,3 dicarbonyl. And then we see on one of sections of, of the, the one, you know, kind of branch side of the carbonyl, we see S, this is a full-blown ester, right? So this is clearly the ester that did the attacking, and then this was formerly an ester, but has since lost its kind of ether character. So we know when we do clays and condensations, we attack from an alpha carbon. So I think it's safe to say that if we were to look at this, we see this to be the ester enolate. Whoa. Esten, ester, enolate. So I think it's safe to say we can draw a line right there. I think it's safe to say that our ester enolate looked like this. And this is the ester it came from. Okay? So that leaves us with this. So what we can kind of tease apart is we definitely had this T-butyl group right there. And we definitely had a carbonyl, but what did we have after? Well, if we wanted to be good with our design of our synthesis, we need an ester, and we can definitely just have kind of the same ether section that that ester has. Because in, you know, if we were to draw an arrow going this way as far as what the reaction conditions would be, we would certainly use ethanol, ETONA, ethoxide, and some workup. So I think it's safe to say that if we had ester A and ester B, and we did A plus B, we would absolutely get the product drawn up here. I think this is also a good synthetic design because if we look at this ester A, there's no way to make this to ester enolate, right? There's no protons here on that alpha carbon to make it an ester enolate, and clearly we have the, you know, Part, part of the ester over here. We have nothing to deprotonate. So I think this is as, simply, as simple as it can get as far as someone saying, here's the, a product and you recognizing it's from clays and condensation and they want you to kind of derive what pieces stuck together to make it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase this and I'll throw up example number two. Okay gang, example number two. Let's dive in. So if we look at this product right here, clearly we see a 1,3 dicarbonyl. But this is a little bit different than the examples we've been doing in our clays and condensations and whatnot. So we don't really see any presence of an ester anywhere. So what gives? Well, the examples I had done in the videos we definitely see an ester enolate plus e or ester 
equals Claisen, right? Claisen condensation. But what you really just need here is an enolate of sorts, right? And we know we can get whether this be a ketone, we can make ketones into an enolate, and we can certainly also take an aldehyde, and we can make that aldehyde into an enolate. So our options are just larger than ester enolates. So again, how can we synthetic, like, you know, you know to, to design a good synthesis to make this product? So, what if, so things we want to try and do. We want to either get a symmetrical, something symmetrical to become our enolate, right? Because we just want to have something to make one enolate. We don't have to worry about the other enolates that can be created. And we want something that is easily accessible to attack as far as sterics are concerned. So if we take a look at this, I hope you can see, because remember, we have to bond from an alpha carbon to a carbonyl. So we need to decide whether we're going to make a cut here or a cut here. And I think we have some flexibility here, but here's my thought process. I'm going to make my cut here. The reason being is if we have the, just cyclohexane, cyclohexanone, I'm sorry, this is super easy to make into an enolate, and with full confidence, we know it doesn't matter which way we deprotonate, here or here, we're going to make one enolate. Okay, and my second reason for picking this to be my uh, electrophile, the thing to be attacked, is because, and it doesn't matter what you choose as far as your, because we, we need still, we, this is all about designing good clays and condensations, good Dieckmann condensations. So if I choose something like this, there's no possibility for me to deprotonate the alpha position over here, there's no protons available. And clearly we have the ester part, the ether part of our ester over there. So this piece can only be attacked. It could never, ever, ever become an enolate. There's no position to do alpha deprotonation. So we have an enolate here that can is, is very predictably and reliably, you know, going to form and form in a way that we're confident is going to be good for our synthesis, as well as something that will be, um, it can't do, it will only be attacked, is what I'm trying to say. So, nothing changes about the mechanism here. We still have attack happening on the carbonyl carbon and the ester. We still form the tetrahedral intermediate. It still collapses. We kick off our un, you know, our, our not um, amazing leaving group. Reform our carbonyl, and then of course that base comes back, but it won't do a retroclase and it won't screw up what we have going because we have a proton available here to help quench it. We deprotonate. That's the irreversible step. Oops, sorry, my nose is itchy. So then we have a negative charge here. And then we'd have some acidic workup to quench that and bring it on home. So the point being, don't think the formula is ester turned into enolate plus ester equals clazin. It can be enolate plus ester. Make sure you have the requirement for the, pro the protonation at the end. Boom, you have a clazin. Okay, so one more example, then we're hopefully done with the, the microscopic you know, zoom, focus on Claisens and Diekmans. Thanks for hanging with me. One more, let's get it. Okay gang, last one. So given this product right here, how can we break this into the components that help to form it? So I hope you're sitting there thinking, hmm, I see a ring. Maybe thinking a Diekmann condensation and not to spoil, you know, the surprise, but you're absolutely right. 
we're gonna do a Diekmann condensation here, which is basically a Claisen, but just forming a ring. Okay, so I hope the other thing you're thinking is we see a carbonyl and we don't see any ester character, and we see that we have this carbonyl right here, and this is an ester. So here's what I'm thinking. We did a Diekmann. And in this Diekmann, we did have an ester enolate that attacked another ester, and it closed the ring. So I think this was our nucleophile, this part right here, and we had an ester, but it has since lost, you know, its ether character right there. So, I think we need to make our cut, and clearly, right, we bought from our alpha carbon. I think we need to make our cut right here, right? Because we did the attack from here. This was the, this was, this carbon was the center of the tetrahedral intermediate that, you know, formed, and then it collapsed, and it booted off our, um, you know, what would have been, I'm going to say, was ethoxide. So, I'm going to go ahead and number this. Uh, I'm going to say... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I'm going to say on carbon 1, I had this jabroni, and I'm going to go ahead and, it was obviously an ester, and I'm going to go with the same uh, theme that we're going to use this two carbons and the oxygen right there. So that was carbon 1. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now carbon nine, which I had my carbon right there, and then I finished this off right there. And easily enough, this is actually all we're going to need. That is where we came from. Okay? Just as easy as that. Because, right, we would, if we were gonna look at this forward, forwards rather, we would have, well. Actually, it doesn't matter. We're symmetrical here. We'd have something like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I did this right. Let me double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which makes sense because we made an eight member ring. We would do this. Then we would kick this up. Then we kick this back down. Then we would do this. Try and draw this appropriately. Okay, cool. There's eight. And I would say we would have this. Then our ethoxide would come back looking for something. Luckily, we have an H here. That would attack. Well, it would attack. Sorry. Deprotonate. Drop our electrons on that carbon. Irreversible step. And then we have hydronium pick us up, taking it all the way home, last leg of the relay, and we get our final product. Okay, gang, this is certainly an area of chemistry you don't want to skimp on your understanding. This is extremely important moving forward. Ester enolate chemistry, it comes up everywhere in the middle and tail end of OCHEM 2. So if you're shaky on your enolate stuff, maybe go back to the alpha carbon section, look at enolate formation, get comfortable because we're going to be here for a little bit. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next video.